Okay, we are recording. Um, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our EcoTeach Meet webinar series all about transport today. Um, we're going to have a bit of a whistle-stop tour through the introduction. Um, if you want to look at our full introduction, that's in our litter, the first one that we did, and it goes through the steps in more detail. Um, so we'll just sort of whiz through these ones. Um, we'll talk a bit about what environmental education is in Leicester, um, eco schools and how it fits into the bigger picture. And then we'll be thinking about travel and transport projects. And there's lots of those and lots of speakers to tell you all about them. Um, after that, we'll do a quick Q&A session. Um, if you have any questions, write them in the chat box and we'll come to them at the end. Uh, then we'll discuss other opportunities coming up as well. Um, so our EcoTeach format is, uh, I think this is our fifth one, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so they're every week at 10 o'clock, but not next week because it's half term. Um, and after that, we'll be doing our biodiversity one on the first week back. Um, so we record this and that goes up on our YouTube channel. And then we also put up the PowerPoint with all the slides and links onto the extra net afterwards. Um, again, during the presentation, if you have any questions, put them in the chat box and then we'll get to those at the end. And then we'll we'll have a general Q&A session at the end of that. Perfect. Um, and the other thing that teams have now added is they've got a hands up feature. So if, if anything's kind of urgent and we've not answered any questions, you can click the little hands up. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure what exactly it does. I think it gives you a little hand on your screen, but then we know that, that people want some attention. But that's not you, Danny, at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a bit about environment education in Leicester. So you have an environmental education team, which is currently Lee and myself, but hopefully tomorrow we'll have another person. So we're interviewing for another position. Um, we provide free support to all schools in Leicester. We have lots of communications from our social media channels and we also send out a monthly e-bulletin and then a quarterly newsletter. Throughout the year we have teach meets, so a bit like this, but generally physically in person once we get to do that again. We have the Eco Schools Roadshow and that's generally in the autumn term. And then we have a celebration in the summer term and the Sustainable Schools Celebration, which is a biannually celebration. Um, we focus on the Eco Schools Award and between Lee and I, we typically deliver on energy and litter projects, but we have a lot of other people, as you see today, that can do other things like transport. Um, and we also offer project support and partnership and sort of hooking you up with people that you need to talk to. Uh, some nice pictures featuring Danny, as you'll see her later as well. And that's from the Eco Schools celebration from last year. Um, so this is how well Leicester is doing in terms of eco schools. Um, we have 109 registered on the programme so far, and we actually have the second highest number of green flags in the country. Hopefully by the end of the term, we might have more. You can still apply for your green flag if you aren't aware of that already. Um, so yeah, we've got 48. Um, so we're close on the hills of the Wirral, who are our biggest competition. So doing really well in that respect. And actually, that's just crept up to 49 because uh, Buswell's Lodge got theirs last week as well. So that needs updating, actually, I've just realised. So, yeah, we've still got schools getting their awards. Even if majority of children are not there, schools can still apply if they've got the evidence. So we work with the UK Schools programme in Leicester and we have seven steps to help you get to Green Flag. Uh, so the first one is forming an eco committee and uh, that can be any group of children in school. If you're particularly focusing on a transport topic, you can have your transport sub team as long as that feeds back into the main eco committee. Um, then you have the environmental review that you do on all 10 of the eco topics, um, one of which will be transport. And that sort of gives you an idea about what the school is already doing in terms of travel and transport topics and what you might want to focus on and improve. It also gives you really good suggestions. So it says about six or seven different things and can, you can sort of springboard off that if you want to look at that. And they also do, as you can see, an early years primary and secondary version, whichever is appropriate to you. Then you have the action plan, so that helps with planning and probably the biggest one other topic that links to travel and transport is healthy living, so you can sort of do those side by side. And then curriculum links. So lots of curriculum links here, so you can have English do some persuasive writing to parents to get them to stop parking right outside the school, maybe park and stride. Maths, handling of data, and then science looking at the air quality, particularly. 
with transport. And informing and involving, probably a good chance to get parents involved again, to get them again stop driving so close to school and the community as well, to prevent a bit of parking outside the school. Uh, monitoring involving, so things like surveys, mostly counting things, data handling, um, checking air quality as well. Maybe Danny can tell us about her air quality captures or samplers, I'm not sure what she calls them. Um, and then you can communicate that to the whole school. Then step seven is the eco code, so it's sort of like your ethos, and that must feed into the topics that you're doing. So for your first green flag, it'll be three topics, for your renewal, it'll be five. Your eco code must reflect the topics that you're doing, so there'd have to be something about transport in there if that's what you're focusing on. So overall, if you're not aware, there are 10 topics. So we've got transport, water, school grounds, healthy living, global citizenship, waste, litter, energy, biodiversity, and marine. And they sort of can all link up together, depending on what you focus on. And just a bit of a summary, key things to think about in topics. So whole school opportunities involving the whole school so that everyone knows what's going on and informing them. Linking to curriculum areas, as I said before, with air quality and persuasive writing. Monitoring the impact of actions, so counting journeys, things like the travel tracker would come in handy. And photos are always useful as well. And then it must be reflected in your eco code. Okay, do you want to take over, Lee? Brilliant, thank you. Yes, Amy. Um, okay. So we've got a long list of transport projects that we're going to talk about today. Some are things that have kind of happened um, to give people an idea. Some are things that are live that are happening at the moment, and some of them are things that are kind of we're planning kind of the next term and kind of the next sort of twelve months. So we'll we'll sort of work our way through some of these topics. Um, just a reminder for people that the Eco Schools at Home activities are still running at the moment. Um, I think another one came out yesterday. I think it was the waste one yesterday. I think. Um, so each of these are basically a two sided sheet that schools can send home to children, to parents that they can do at home as an eco schools activity. Um, so each of them are kind of well, they are produced by eco schools um, and they can be used kind of when schools go back to normal, if you like, they can be used as a kind of a homework activity or an extended project. So they're all just on the eco school site if you just search for eco schools at home. Um, last year we ran a pilot with Beat the Street. Uh, which is all about encouraging children and families to walk. Um, and the, you can see from the pictures, some children there that were tapping their little bands onto the um, boards. And then the idea is that you collect points and that becomes a competition. Um, so that was run with 20 schools last year and we're planning to run um, another one in the future, um, kind of across the city. So Beat the Street is something that if people want to just have a look up, um, they kind of run all over the country. Uh, we also work with British Cycling, so they run a couple of schemes uh, with schools. Um, so you can just see there's one that's called Ready, Set, Ride, which is aimed at reception year one and go ride with year five and six. Um, and Tiffany's contact details are on there. Um, and that'll be something that, as far as I know, we'll be offering again when schools kind of majority return. So that's kind of another thing just to be aware of. Um, and another project that probably a lot of people have seen um, are the small children, which people are sometimes a little bit scared of. Um, but I think that's useful sometimes, makes people look and the pencil bollards. So quite a few schools have had these through um, one of our projects around with school run parking. Um, so if you've seen them, that's something that the council's been delivering previously with quite a number of schools in the city. And I know that's been quite beneficial um, as much as anything, just making people aware, um, just making people aware that kind of there are schools kind of when they pass things that they notice. Um, Sally just mentioned as well, Beat the Street are also running something called Beat the Bug at the moment, um, which is another scheme that they're sort of running. Um, so it'd be worth just googling beat the bug um, so that's all linked and I thought we should mention Avenue Primary School because they were the national eco school winners um, for the project around um, transport so they went to Manchester in November um, and they won a prize um, for their transport topic so you can see lots of things they were doing around either Happy Shoes Day, uh, Water School, um, Cycling and lots of events so again you can sort of just look them up on their website. And I'm going to pass over to Sally, if that's OK, who's going to pick up a few projects and a few questions for people. Uh, so we we operate bikeability um, in Leicester at the moment, um, which is what we used to call the cycling proficiency. 
Um, we deliver it at the moment, we've got capacity to deliver it to about 50 schools and two and a half thousand pupils. Um, it starts in the playground and we generally do that with, with year five or year six um, to get them used to um, cycling and, and turning left and turning right and taking their hands off the handlebars. And then in level two, uh, we go out to roads around the school um, and, and practice the turning right left uh, and um, cycling with traffic and parked cars. Uh, then the, there is a level three, which is longer journeys, which um, we, we're hoping to, or we were hoping to do a little bit more of that um, this, or this coming school year. Um, and that's more about the transition through to um, going on to secondary school. So looking at the journeys that the children might, might take on by bike to go to their secondary schools. Uh, the person to contact is is Colin Cheney. That's his email address. He's raring to go. He'd love to be delivering bikeability in the schools at the moment. Um, I think we'd, we're just taking a call on on really or get. It'd be great to have an understanding from the schools what you feel about that and and when you would feel comfortable with us coming in to start delivering again. So um, yeah contact Colin or myself if you've got any queries about bikeability. Amy, can you move on to the next? Or yeah. Lee, I'm not yeah. sure who's in control of the slide. <laughs> <laughs> it's me today, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. And then hopefully some of you might have heard or seen some things about the schools ride. It, it's very closely linked to bikeability. Um, we, we can't uh, allow a school to join unless they have um, delivered bikeability within the school um, but it, it, it's great fun it, it happened or it normally happens every year um, we normally have brilliant weather for it I think we've only had one year out of the the 10 that we've done it where it's drizzled a little bit um, and and we we bring children in from the schools that have done bike or selection of schools that have done bikeability into the city centre uh, we put we hand out some awards there's some ent entertainment that goes on Phil but the fox is normally present there as is strider the big giant foot uh, and and it's great people in Leicester are starting to to recognize it as the children right through ride through the streets in their brightly colored tabards uh, and, you know and are cheering them on and it's just a great day and, and a way of celebrating the fact that we're still teaching children how to ride bicycles safely that's the school's ride And, and then my final slide really is is more about um, as trying to get an understanding from you um, how we might be able to help you when you do when children do start going back to school. Um, what we'd be concerned about uh, is there's, there's already a lot of congestion around schools, or there had been um, previously, uh, and, and that that's what the school run parking program was about to try and ease that. Um, what we're concerned about is that we, we try and avoid going back to that situation or, or it being even worse. So if you have within a school, you've got concerns about um, how you think your children are going to be traveling back to school, um, then we'd really like to, to hear about it. I, I think Chris, I don't want to steal your thunder, Chris, but I think Chris might be talking about um, a questionnaire that's going out to to hopefully going out to the schools to send out to the parents for us to understand um, how parents think they might be um, traveling when they return when their children return to school again uh, and we'll be really interested to hear from the parents on that so if you could encourage uh, your schools and your parents to respond to that that will make it easier for us to try and work out what we can do to help um, one of the things that that we were considering is is helping you to perhaps if you think you need it is closing um, the streets off around your school at the um, school run time particularly in the afternoon so that um, your parents can can or whoever's picking up the children have, have got more space to safely social distance um, but but really it, it's a plea from me for, for you to get in contact with us to let us know um, what you think you you need Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, Sally. Um, and I guess for people that are maybe watching this on YouTube, if you want to drop us an email at eco-schools at 
www.gov.uk. Uh, we can forward them across to the transport team, cycling, walking team um, with any sort of feedback. Um, but yeah, anything like that would be useful because you can see pictures here from Catherine. Uh, Junior's the one on the left and the right. So you can see that sort of when they did their closure day, you obviously get a lot more space of when parents are coming in and out in the morning, um, in the afternoon. Um, so that is one potential option. But yeah, any sort of feedback we can get from people, um, the easier it is for us to support schools on these kind of things. Um, so yeah, there's just one question, Sally, just at the moment, um, which was just about uh, bikeability. Is there anything online that parents can see around bikeability or any videos that parent, uh, children can watch or anything that you're aware of? Uh, yeah, there is the bikeability website. Uh, if you Google it, that's probably got a lot of information on what bikeability is and the, mm -hmm. the different levels. Um, that's a, a that's probably the best one. That's a general one. It isn't Leicester specific, but but the the program is, is the same. It's it's consistent throughout the country. So um, if you Google bikeability, it'll um, take you through the steps of, of bikeability. OK, brilliant. Lovely. Thank you very much. Um, we shall move on then, if that's OK. On to Chris with Sustrans then, if that's OK. Hang on, we can't hear you yet, Chris, sorry. <laughs> Still muted at the moment. Hello, hello, can you hear me? Go. Yep, go for it, yes, yep. Just give me a shout when you want me to move on slides I, as well. I'm <laughs> I will do. I forgot what you said at the beginning, so I'll mute myself. Good morning, everyone. Oh, um, so I'm Chris, I work the Sustrans, um, we're the, the National Walking and Cycling Charity. Um, we've been working in Leicester uh, for a number of years now with, with schools. Um, Danny used to work work for us. Um, she's moved on to work City Council. Um, so the main aim of the project is to make it easier for kids to to walk and cycle uh, to school, which which in a minute is obviously a, a huge topic. Um, and just move on to the next slide for me, Lee. Yeah. Um, so, so we really see a, a lot of benefits um, in, in kids being able to walk and cycle to school. So um, for schools, obviously, it's, it's a huge impact on congestion from cars if, if more pupils are walking and cycling. Um, if there's less cars and more people walk and cycling, there's, there's, um, it's much safer, it's more pleasant, uh, along with a bunch of other benefits. So to our kids, um, active travel is really good for them. We know if kids are, are getting exercise in the day, they're going to be more aware, more awake, they're going to be happier, they're going to concentrate better. Um, so we, we do a number of activities to encourage them to walk and cycle and the benefits go on to the, the wider community. Um, you know, there's less pollution around schools and in the community, there's less congested roads. Um, it's just a nicer atmosphere around the school for, for the whole community. So so how do we do that? As strands? Well, I hear a number of activities on, on the next slide that we we do in schools um, or have been doing. Obviously, at the minute, unfortunately, we can't be. Um, so we do anything from doctor bike checks, that's checking bikes are safe to ride, it's doing minor repairs. Uh, we do maintenance workshops with kids, um, we do cycling scooter skills training. Um, so it's not how to ride on the road, that's bike ability, but it's it's how to ride your bike. So it's balance ability for kids uh, to learn to ride the bike in the first place, or it's um, cycle skill sessions to become more confident about just using their bike using the brakes, stopping and starting, going around corners, stuff like that. We've got a whole host of assemblies we do um, around why cycling is good, why it's exciting, and around road safety. So in, in the autumn term, we tend to be brightly seen assemblies. You know, how do you make sure you're, you're being seen? And then a range of other road safety stuff. We've also got a range of activities in the classroom that link to curriculum, and then we do competitions and national events, um, some of which are on the, the next slide or two. So every year we run the big pedal, which is two week cycling competition. How many kids at your school can you get to walk and scoot and cycle to school each day for, for a week or two weeks? Unfortunately, this year's was cancelled because it was meant to be just after Easter, but hopefully it'll be, be running again in the future. Um, we also take part in Clean Air Day, which is the next slide. Um, this is a joint event with City Council. Uh, so this one's from two years ago. Um, and we closed the road outside of school. We did one last year to close a road. And then the, the, the plan for this year, um, which, which Danny was really leading on as part of her Clean Air initiative, um, was to close lots of, of roads outside schools. Um, 
obviously, unfortunately, that's going to have to be pushed back until till next year. Um, so that's just a, a kind of brief overview of kind of things that we we do. Um, we just skip on again, Lee, uh, yeah. to, to the next slide. Um, so just uh, a few highlights from this year then. Um, so the next slide, Lee. Oh, yeah. um, this year we've worked with 71 schools um, with 27,000 pupils. Um, and then last term alone, um, there's a few highlights from that. We, we helped 150 kids learn to ride their bike for the first time. Um, we did six road safety assemblies. We did 20 prize giving events. And then we had nine pupil led workshops. That's that's workshops with small groups of pupils looking at how they can encourage um, cycling at their school and how they can make a big impact on their school community. Um, I just want to share with you a, a little story um, about a school that I work with this year. It's Buzzwell's Lodge up in, in Beaumont Lees. At the start of the year, um, they had no cycling facilities at all. Um, they had no kids cycling to school and they had lots of parking issues outside their school. They're on a cul-de-sac, really narrow, lots of residential parking, loads of issues. Um, and, and they're really worried about safety. So I spent a lot of time working with them about uh, around road safety um, and how we could encourage cycling, how we can make it easier for kids. We did a trial day of a bike school day for the first time uh, last term. And then this year we decided we we're going to launch a regular bike to school day. And this is a picture from the first day. Um, and on that day we had a number of kids. Turn up. So it's 84 um, pupils, I think, turned up on bike um, with 60 scooting. And BBC Radio Leicester came up on the day, interviewed parents and staff uh, and asked them, you know, how are they finding it? What, what do they think of the day? This was at the beginning of the year. Since then, they've had a regular bike school day up until schools close with loads of kids cycling and scooting. And they just used this spare bit of their, their school ground to store the bikes and the scooters um, in until they can build a permanent bike shelter. But on Thursdays, the road outside the school is very, very quiet. They don't have as many parking issues, don't have as many cars. The entire atmosphere just feels more relaxed, more calm, and the kids are really excited to be there. Um, and they've gone from nothing to, to this uh, in the course of less than a year, which is really exciting. Um, so one of the, the schools I like to, to brag about um, in terms of what, what's happened with them. So that's just a little overview of some of the work we've, we've done. Um, obviously, at the minute, we're, we're very sad that we can't be working in schools um, and we look forward to when we can go back and, and do stuff. But we have been working on what it looks like to go back for a safe return when schools will let us. Alongside that, we've been developing some some stuff to use now. Um, so the first thing I want to share with you something Sally mentioned earlier, which is just on the next slide. Um, we're, we're working on a uh, travel survey. This is asking parents how their kids have been cycling to school and, and getting to school, um, what, what methods they've been using, and what they'd like, how they'd like their their pupil, their, their children to travel to school in the future, um, and what would make it easier for them to travel in different ways, what would make them more likely to cycle or to walk or to scoot or to get public transport. Um, so this survey is going to be launched hopefully next week. We'll be sending it out to all the schools we work with and we'll be putting it on the school's intranet. Um, if you don't currently work with us but would like uh, this, please do get in touch. Um, any parent who responds will have a chance to win a prize. Um, that will probably be a bike. A brand new bike for their child but we've not quite set on that. Um, hopefully this will the response to this will be used by both your school and um, the council to, to look at what measures can be put in place to make it safer and easier for when schools do reopen and return as Sally was saying earlier. There's one thing we've been working on. Um, we've also just launched uh, the other day a thing called Outside In. This is a weekly newsletter of events and activities it simmers the eco school stuff, but it's all uh, around cycling and scooting. It's five days of activities. Um, some of them are more creative, some of them more educational, and it's got a weekly challenge as well. Uh, if parents want to do this, they need to sign up to our, our email on our website, and I can send out a link for this after the meeting. Um, it's totally free to get this for four weeks, loads of activities uh, for the kids to do at home and it's for a range of ages as well. 
and after the four weeks we're, we'll be looking at continuing this um, this is something we're doing on a national level so it's, it's going out all across the country and with loads of parents taking part already uh, lastly um the thing we've put together at the moment um obviously it's already been mentioned um and been in use quite a lot uh parents are very worried about taking their kids back to school and, and how they get there safely um, and a lot of concern that we have at Sustrans is people are just going to hop in their cars and of course congestion outside the school gates and there won't be a lot of room. Um, so this is a little bit of travel advice we we're working on um, for parents of how they can walk and, and cycle to school safely with their children. Um, this has been adapted by one of our colleagues elsewhere in the country. We put in some less specific information in this one. Um, again, we will make this available to all schools we work with and get it on the school's internet. Um, so you can send that to your parents before they start bringing their kids back to school. Um, hopefully just make it easier to reassure them, and give them some good advice on that. So that's just kind of a, a summary of things we've been working on at Sustrans um, and kind of the support we, we've got at the moment uh, for schools. Brilliant. Thanks, Chris. That's real. Um, there's a couple of questions. I'll probably just ask them now if that's all right. Um, so with the parent travel survey, is that nationwide or is that a less specific one? or are each area doing their own at the moment? So this is, um, it's been done in one other, well, one other area of the country, but this one is less specific. Okay, well, thank you. Um, and then there's just a couple of things about being added to mailing lists, but I can do that offline, so I think that's okay. Um, yeah. yeah, that's great, thank you. So we'll, we'll hand over across to Jesse then, if that's okay um to do with living streets which is another one of our big flag flagship projects that happens in the city um and i think probably just to sort of reiterate what we've already said around sustrans and living streets they do sort of spearhead a lot of our transport work in the city and it's it's really nice when a school says we want to do this that i can literally pass them straight across to officers who can lead on these things so i'll pass you over to jesse and to, to pick up some stuff around living streets hi everyone hopefully you can all hear me um yeah. Great. So my name's Jessie. Um, I am filling in for Katie Sprantz, who is usually your Leicester Living Streets contact. Um, I've got some contact details at the end, so um, you can take them for her and for me if, if you need them. Um, so I just wanted to introduce Living Streets first. Um, we're the UK charity for everyday walking. Um, and we don't just work with schools, we work with a whole variety of um, of different communities so if we go on to the next slide yeah um next one again well have i missed have i deleted one of yours by accident i might have done um it. no but this one yes Don't okay it's coming up now oh, yeah. um so here are some examples of sort of other things that we campaign for um you know we work with getting children to watch school but we're also campaigning for 20 miles per hour um in a lot of cities. Um, we're trying to stop pavement parking. A lot of stuff is going on in, in sort of our wider context that I just thought would be interesting for you guys to know about. Um, so if you go on to the next slide. Yeah. Um, all of the work that we do is, is very evidence-based. So if you did, if you were so inclined, if you wanted to go and find some more research about, about any of the stuff I'm talking about today or, or if anybody's been talking about today um, do go and have a look on our website because there's some really good resources on there. Next slide. So I wanted to try and make this a little bit engaging um, so I'm just going to ask everyone the question why encourage walking to school and you can either write your response down in, in the conversation or if you're on YouTube just just write it down next to you um, just a little reflection task. And then if we go on to the next slide, yeah. here are some of the things that I thought of um, when I did that task. So a lot of things that Chris has already talked about, which is having a healthier and happier children, um, a lot less congestion at school gates, which we, we all know is really important. Um, another great reason for walking to school is having some quality family time. A lot of our families say that walk to school is actually their favourite part of the day um, because they get to chat with their parents or chat with their children. Um, and this this one in the corner um, 
time to learn about uh, road skills. That ties in with a lot of what bikeability do as well is is sort of getting those skills ready for for wider life. And we think that's really important. So that's what we try to, to promote. Next slide. And obviously, um, you know, those are sort of individual benefits, but there are these wider benefits for individual schools. So if you are on the call and you're a teacher or a school leader, having these awards on, on your website is, is really, really good for prospective parents. Um, you know, all of these awards are very nationally recognised, as we know, um, and our projects feed into them. Um, and then if we go on to the next slide. So this is um, a sort of consideration about what Ofsted is saying um, in their most recent uh, review of their framework. So um, Her Majesty's Chief Inspector Amanda Spielman said in this recent video that she wanted schools to focus on holistic education. Now we can take that as we like as practitioners. Um, I, I interpret it in my own way, um, but I'll leave it to you guys on, on how you want to interpret it. She also emphasises that um, they are going to reward schools with integrity and something that I thought was really interesting um, on reflection, which is this quote about acting with integrity, even in challenging circumstances. And that was a video done in September before some of the most challenging circumstances of our generation have, have really come up. So that's quite an interesting thing to think about. Um, and then this last statement, which is probably something we all know if we're on this call, which is, is Boris Johnson has said in his, his recent statement that he wants people to travel by walk or bicycle. Um, so that's what these big figures are saying. OK, next slide. So this is some of the work that Living Streets is doing in Leicester. You've got your key contact names at the top there. You've got Katie France, who does a lot of the sort of on the ground work in Leicester. And then you've got Annie Russell, who's a sort of remote support for a lot of schools. Um, so these are some of our projects that we run. We run WOW, which is the year round walk to school challenge. And it's probably the thing we're sort of known for the most. Um, we run that in primary schools. We also run Walk to School Week, um, Happy Shoes Day, and then some other things that people are less aware of, which is our work with secondary and post-primary settings. So we've got Next Steps to Secondary, which is a transition package, um, Next Steps Change Makers, Next Steps to University. And then those links on that slide um, actually link with some lockdown resources that we've created um, for the current pandemic. So we've got some for, for primary schools and secondary schools, which are on that slide. I don't know if these slides are going to be shared afterwards, Lee. Yes, yeah. So we'll okay. put them up on the extranet uh, with the YouTube video and then these will all be, yeah, people can download Excellent. and link them. Yeah. Yeah. So people can um, access them through there. And then right at the bottom, you've got the um, school streets toolkit, which is very similar to what um, we were talking about at the start, which is um, streets to play. And um, that's a sort of support toolkit that we offer for schools um, helping them make the streets around their schools really, really safe. Um, so, yeah, that's another resource that we have. So I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about some of these projects now. Um, the first one is WOW, which is our year round walk to school challenge. Um, so this is a process of recording journeys every day on Travel Tracker, which I'll show in a moment. Um, the idea is that any any child who is actively traveling to school once a week across a month gets rewarded with with a badge. Um, and these are collectible badges. Um, they're made, they're designed by children um, as part of our badge design competition. Um, and they've proven really, really effective. They change every year. There's a different theme and um, the children are really, really excited about them. So if we go on to the next slide, yeah. I'm going to show you now what our travel tracker looks like. Um, so some people might have heard of this before. They might have even used it before. What it looks like now is um, a little bit slicker and simpler than previous versions. So I'm going to share my screen. Yeah, um, so I'm just going to stop sharing mine and then hopefully that will come back. 
So this is the classroom view of our travel tracker. Um, the classroom view is really, really accessible, um, which means that teachers can allow children to do it. A lot of the time we get teachers, to, we actively encourage teachers to get pupils to sort of take control of this. So they might appoint two children that go on to travel tracker each morning or afternoon um, and record their journeys. So there are two different um, ways of recording journeys. Um, this is what you sort of come through to. You've got the in individual screen. So this is a list of children in the class. Um, they've all got their own little icon um, and a sort of nickname underneath. The reason that we have these nicknames is for GDPR reasons, but that can be adapted if we need it. Um, so if I go on and sample, if someone has cycled, then they make progress towards getting that wow badge. So it's not about just walking to school, it's about any sort of active transport. Um, so if they manage to do an active transport method every week in a month, then they'll get a badge and their icon will turn into a sort of badge icon um, to keep track of that. A quicker way of doing it, and this is the slicker method that I was meant that I was mentioning earlier, um, is this batch method. So here, if everyone in the class has walked, then you can just click on rather than having to go in each time. And then it automatically saves that. So then you can go on to another transport method for example, hop off, which is getting the bus and hopping off early and it, it records it and saves it automatically. So we found that that has actually helped teachers a lot um, in quickening up the process around Travel Tracker. And it's probably really useful to know about if you've done Travel Tracker before. Um, right, I'll stop sharing that now and we can go back to the presentation. Excellent. Uh, yeah. So um, what you get with the travel tracker is not just um, quite an accessible platform. You also get um, this sort of list of other resources. So you get um, access to the class leaderboards so you can sort of have internal um, school competitions. The badges are automatically calculated. Um, you can run reports on different travel systems. So if you wanted to have a focus on cycling, you could do that on Travel Tracker. If you wanted to have a focus on reducing car journeys, you could do that on Travel Tracker. Um, and another thing that isn't mentioned here is there is actually loads of free resources for teachers on Travel Tracker, which link with the national curriculum. Um, so that's that's always good to know about. Um, great, if we go on to the next slide. So here are some examples of what that data looks like um, from Travel Tracker. So you can see it's really quite visual and colourful. Um, I know teachers have used it before to extend maths activities or maths challenges, um, just as a sort of fun way to make maths seem more relevant um, to children's lives. So yeah, that's that's one way of using this data. And if we continue, ah, so here's here's a list of all the resources that you, you get from us um, if you're part of the WOW project. So you get your Travel Tracker subscription, um, you get letters for parents, you get certificates, you get guidance on how to set up um, Park and Stride or how to run Travel Tracker. Um, and you also get that support from our coordinators. So you would have Katie or Annie on the phone or email or face to face, depending on what our new normal looks like. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so if we move on now. So these are the stats in Leicester um, for the WOW project specifically. Um, so this is taken from travel tracker data from September through to March. We've had 54 schools across Leicester participating this year um, and 38 of those schools 
were recording on Travel Tracker. So this data is from 38 of those schools. Um, you can see in the table that active trips have gone up by a, a really high percentage, 17%, um, and that has come all, totally out of the car trips. So all of the car trips um, have gone basically into active trips. Um, the graph at the bottom, which isn't very clear, I do apologise, um, also shows that there's sort of an immediate effect of, of the WOW project. So you can see right at the start, those sort of very light pink um, bars are the walking trips. They immediately start going up after the first, second, third week, um, and they stay up over winter, which we think is something to be really proud of um, for all these schools. Obviously, when it gets to March, it then starts going down again, but that's that's because people stopped recording on Travel Tracker because of other worries. Um, so yeah, that's the stats in Leicester. Um, I'll move on and try and zoom through these other projects that we're that we're running. Um, so this is Next Steps to Secondary School, um, which is our transition offer from Living Streets. And ordinarily, this would be um, two workshops delivered to year six pupils, planning their journeys to secondary school and trying to encourage them to make active choices. Um, so the way it would run is, is one of our coordinators would go in with the year six pupils in primary school and run a sort of active travel workshop. And then again in September, um, we'd go back with those same pupils, but when they're in year seven and have a walking challenge. Um, so that's our transition offer. We're hoping to adapt it to make it a bit more um, flexible with, with current affairs and we'll keep, keep everyone updated with that. Um, if we go on to the next slide. So this is our project that we run in secondary schools. Um, this is called Next Steps Changemakers, which is a, a new term. Um, it used to be called Next Steps um, Free Your Feet, but now it's now it's Changemakers. Um, what it consists of is a Living Streets member of staff going into secondary schools and working with um, students who sort of have an interest in this topic and they come together and they lead a campaign um, to make walking around their schools, around their school or their educational setting better. Um, so an example might be um, a secondary school group realises that there's loads of congestion outside schools, so they want to set up a park and stride, um, they could do that with this. Or it could be, you know, further education college students want to have more pathfinder signs um, around around their setting. Um, it's very, very student focused, um, which we sort of feel makes them more engaged, more passionate and gives them those skills to to develop further. Um, so that's that. And then the final project that we're running in Leicester is Next Steps to University. Um, which is our sort of post primary post secondary offer um, we do this in a variety of universities across across the country and it's much more focused on mental health and student well-being um, so we try and engage students through that avenue um, we do a lot of lead walks, we do a lot of pledge events. Um, you can see one of my colleagues there um, giving out loads of free things and getting people to commit to walking. Um, and they have been really, really successful across the country. A lot of students have said, you know, that they've they felt like they know their new university and their, their new community a lot better from doing that. So that's been really successful. And then if we move to the final slide, those are our sort of getting in touch details. Um, so if you do have any questions or if you want to sort of sign up for anything, um, then do just get in touch. Best to get in touch with me for now um, because Katie probably won't be responding to any emails for a while, um, but I'll, I'll do my best to sort of forward them into the right place. Brill, thanks Jessie, that's great. Thank you. Lovely. Right, we'll move on 
to Danny, last but not least. So Danny, if you want to just over to you, if you want to give us uh -huh. a bit of an update of air quality in Leicester. Okay, all right then. So um, because uh, we've not got very much time, I think I'm going to skip through a lot of the um, the general information about the project because um, if it's just Hannah, Sarah, is there is there anyone else from a different school that isn't aware of air quality education? Could you just type in the chat box for me very quickly? Is that a no? Is that a no? All right then. Okay, that's a no. So everybody that um, is working with me understands the air quality education project. Um, and just very briefly, I think that it's a really great way to explore what air quality is, what air pollution is, where it comes from and what we can do about it. Um, and it works really well with the Sustrans work and Living Streets work that is happening um, at schools across the city as well, which is really good. It helps to fill in the blanks and it's a really good USP, like a, a unique selling point for those other projects as well, um, which I think is a really, really great thing. Um, so during the course of lockdown, um, I've been trying to adapt the offer a little bit to make it a bit more accessible. So, um, oh, hang on a minute, Lee, steady on. Right, so I've been checking. trying to <laughs> adapt the offer a tiny little bit to make it more accessible. So on that first slide there, there is a little link where it says lessons, workshops and assemblies available to download. And that jumps you straight through to the school's extranet page. And on that page, you can see a whole list of all of the assemblies, the main ones that I offer that relate to um, an introduction to what air pollution is. Um, and I think there might be a couple of others on there as well, a park and stride one, and perhaps um, one about the switch your engine off campaign. But you can download those and use them in classrooms or depending on what the scenario is going to be like when you go back to school in an assembly situation in your school hall. There's also workshops and activities that you can download um, lesson plans and resources for as well. So they can be run either at home. So you can send them home in emails, put them on your websites, um, do what you want with them, really. Um, and there's also um, a document that I've put together, which is more specific to things that can be done in the classroom and in the kitchen. And um, that's just practical activities, a selection of the workshops and some other like little bits and pieces that can try and engage mums and dads and kids with what air quality and air pollution are and what they can do about it at home. And um, so there's like practical experiments looking at trying to find air pollution, trying to make it visual, so making their own air pollution catcher. There's a smog in a jar activity, which is quite nice for key stage one and key stage two. So you can actually see what smog looks like. And then there's some stuff for older kids as well to start thinking about um, buying ele an electric car, for instance, because that's something that's quite hot on the agenda at the minute. Um, we'll just skip through to the next slide now, Lee, and move on to Clean Air Day. So this has already been touched on today already um, by Chris. So as Chris has mentioned beforehand, Clean Air Day in its previous years was a huge road closure event. And um, we held one in 2018 at Glebelands Primary School, which is on the north uh, north kind of Leicester, Leicestershire boundary. So it's it's right up there, um, almost out of the city, actually. Um, but that was a fantastic event that we held. And then we held another one last year at Catherine Junior School, which is far more inner city in the St Matthews estate. And um, both were really well um, taken on board by parents and everyone got fully, fully enthusiastic about it. We had goodness knows how many scooters and bikes rock up on those days when we closed the roads people really did change the way that they thought about getting to school and it's something that we want to continue to do but on a much smaller kind of on an individual smaller scale but on a wider scale as well so this time um obviously clean air day was due to happen on june the 18th but that's since moved so we've postponed it or clean air day have postponed it until the 8th of October whether or not that's going to happen we don't know yet so we kind of need to just wait and see what what's going to happen in the future um, but we've kind of reimagined the scenario a little bit so we wanted more schools to get involved and participate and um, Leicester City Council um, have decided that we are going to start um, uh, a school play street road closure um, initiative which basically means that we've made the process easier for schools to apply for a school play street order which means that at certain times of the day or throughout the year you can close your road outside of your school 
um, with approval from the city council for up to three hours at a time and that can be twice a day and as I said that doesn't have to just be on one day so it doesn't have to be on clean air day it can be repeated throughout the next 12 months as well um, so there is, an, there is an application process for those road closures um, and to, to join that initiative um, but it's fairly simple and at the minute we've got five schools on board that are looking to run a road closure activity at least for clean air day um, and they're hoping to repeat it as well. We're helping them with the application process, um, filling out risk assessments, making sure they've got the right insurance in place, um, putting together an event plan and all of the things that might sound a little bit complicated um, but we're helping people to sort that out. We've also um, waived the application fee for the first 10 schools who want to apply um, to join us uh, with a road closure um, event for Clean Air Day. So the application fee is usually £170, so that's being waived this time round. Um, but if you don't want to take on the, the kind of the burden of a, a school play street order right now, um, you don't need to worry about it. If you want to just do a little something for Clean Air Day, then um, we are putting together a toolkit of events and activity ideas that we can send out to you. So that's going to be ready within the next couple of months, probably before um, uh, schools go back, hopefully in September, <laughs> fingers crossed. Um, but if you want to know more about the school play street order, how to apply, what it even means, because it, I, it took me a little while to get my head around it, then you can either drop me an email, my email address is there, or Sally, um, who is the absolute goddess of um, kind of school play street order bits and pieces. Um, she's brilliant. To, she'll be great to talk you through the application process as well. So I think, Lee, that's about it for Clean Air Day. Mm -hmm. um, what was next? Was it? Some, was there something else? Switch off your engine. Oh, so this is a campaign that has been um, soaring with schools. Honestly, it, it did really, really well last year. We got seven schools on board and one of them was Avenue Primary School, which had a huge media hit. Um, uh, the, the, the press uh, kind of got hold of the story, um, re uh, not regionally, but locally. Um, and I think it appeared in some kind of regional press as well. We also had BBC Radio Leicester come down and interview the kids about the Switch Off Your Engine campaign. Um, so it was it was definitely something that was quite a big hit in the area. So for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, because I haven't explained myself, which is usual Danny style, um, a Switch Off Your Engine campaign is an anti-idling campaign um, that um, is full of different resources that schools can use to try and discourage vehicles, any kind of vehicles, that's parents in the mornings that are parking or in the afternoons, it's delivery drivers, um, ice cream vans, which always happens in the summer, especially outside Avenue Primary School. It's just to discourage them from leaving their engines running while they're waiting, um, because it is a, a known fact that um, one of the biggest contributors to air pollution around schools is through idling vehicle engines. So the idea is, is that we can either be very hands off, we can give you the resources for the campaign, which include an assembly that you can run um, yourself um, with your school, however you want to do that. We've got flyers that can go out in book bags to parents. And then we've got some A2 poster boards that can go up on railings um, outside of school gates. Um, and we can come along if you if we're able to to run um, kind of parents evening or stores at fairs and that kind of thing to help get the message out. Um, but one thing that really picked up last year, um, which was a shame we couldn't continue with it really, um, was going into schools and working with the eco team or the transport committee or the school council on putting together their own campaigns and taking these resources and then um, finding different ways to get the message out. So lots of kids have been making their own posters, writing letters that were quite emotive actually to go home to mums and dads um, to tell them about why they need to switch their engine off. Um, they were doing idling monitoring outside of their school gates at 7.30 in the morning until just before school opened, it was bonkers. Um, but the kids really do get behind it. They're the driving force, they're the ones that are passionate about it. Um, so hopefully, um, you know, however we make it work, whether it's remotely or kind of going in um, and only working with small groups outside, 
there will be a way for us to kind of generate these fantastic people-led campaigns again. Um, so if you wanted some more information, then again, just drop us an email if you wanted to. Next. Next slide, please, Lee. And yeah, then, yeah. <laughs> sorry. And then I'm just trying to hurry because I'm aware that we're like at one hour, five minutes nearly. And then finally, so the Healthier Air for Leicester Schools Award was an award that was put together about three years ago now. And that was to celebrate all of the work that schools were undertaking on the transport topics. Um, so that's working on the living streets, walk to school stuff. It's working on the Sustrans cycling to school. It's doing school and parking projects and anything that a school could to try and change the travel behavior of kids getting to school, um, alleviate congestion and improve air quality. And um, we were planning, uh, I think it was about 21 schools last year got the award and I think it was perhaps 17 the year before. This year I had grand visions of like 25, nearly 30 schools nailing this award and unfortunately um, we're going to have to postpone it. So I believe it's going to be postponed in line with the Eco School celebration until 2021, but I will wait for Lee to confirm that. Um, however, um, all of the evidence, um, and I think Lee's happy for this as well, all evidence that you can collect um, that would um, uh, perhaps support an application for a Healthy Air for Leicester Schools Award that relates to all of your, um, your travel work that you're doing under the transport topic, keep it together because we'll put it all towards the award for next year um, because um, it's great work and it needs to be um, kind of highlighted really. There you go. Excellent. Um, so, do you want me to just wrap up on walking maps? Is that all right, Danny? Um, if you wanted to, yep. Yeah. Um, so one of the projects that the cycling and walking team are working on at the moment are school specific uh, walking maps. So they're currently being developed. Um, so you can see here is one of the prototypes, um, which is for Mellor Primary, and it gives you an idea of what sort of a 10, 15, 20 minute walk um, looks like. So I think one of the issues that we quite often have with parents is, oh, it's too far to walk or it takes me too long. So these maps, hopefully you can use as an individual school with your parents. Um, and once we've produced these, we'll arrange around doing some assemblies and some launch events at each school. Um, so we're doing those in batches at the moment. So when when your school becomes available, um, we'll contact you directly on those. Um, but that's something else just to sort of make you aware of um, that we're working on. Um, and then just very briefly, uh, just a reminder around declaring climate emergencies. So we've got some information up on our website around how schools can declare their own climate emergencies. Um, so that's something we're encouraging um, schools to talk to their governors and their trustees about um, and around declaring their own school emergency and how they then would develop their action plans which transport is quite a big area for schools um, to look at. So again, kind of looking for support from, from colleagues, we can help you with that. And then I'll just pass you back to Amy just to wrap up then, if that's okay. And then we'll do a few questions. You can just put her microphone back Sorry, on. Sorry, Amy. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so just a couple more opportunities. We've got the UN Climate Change Learn Online course, um, which is I'm doing at the moment. It's a very interesting course about climate change and sort of feeds into lots of different modules. And we also have the off school website, which has a host of resources from the SDSA, which is Leicester based um, and has lots of stuff to do while you're in lockdown. Uh, lots of videos and ideas there. And um, here are some links to some if you're looking for a, a financial support to get you started on your transport topics. Yeah, and if you've got any sort of particular issues around transport where you potentially do need funding, do do get in touch with us because we do have some Leicester specific funding for certain bits of the city if they're in um, action areas and things. So by all means, come and have a chat with us first rather than kind of trying to go out generally to look for funding. There might be something sort of very specific. We know that some schools have been able to get funding for bike shelters and things. If they're in target areas in the city, um, that funding kind of comes and goes as time kind of goes on so it's always worth kind of just making us aware if that's something you're interested in um and then i think just questions just to pick up there are a couple i think that we've not covered off um let me just have a look uh so one of the questions around the road closures being on bus routes um probably not um been able to close bus routes but again um if you get in touch with with sally she can provide you some more information and kind of um uh, which roads we could look at and that sort of thing um, so that's something. Um, 
yeah, we can make sure we provide any advice that we've mentioned today. We'll make sure we put links up in the PowerPoint. Um, just have a look through, just check there's nothing else. I don't think there were any other questions in the chat box. Did anyone else have any questions um, sort of more generally that we've not answered um, or I've missed off on the chat box? If anybody either wants to um, put their hand up now or um, ask any questions in the box. So it's a good sign sometimes or a bad sign if there's no questions. <laughs> Just do a check. Aha, Sarah, you've got your hand up. Let me see if I can unmute you. I thought I'd test the button to see if it worked. Uh, okay, yes, it did. And yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm glad someone knows that. <laughs> yeah, it's quite useful, actually. And you can now get nine people on a screen, so it makes life a little bit easier. Um, on her side. I don't know. I think Amy's just decided to nip off to Australia for five minutes. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's that gin she's been drinking in the morning. You just, I've had words, but there's not a lot you can do about that. <laughs> Having a lie down. <laughs> it's exhausting work, this. It is. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, I don't think if anyone's got any other questions then. Um, just a quick reminder then that next week uh, we're having a week off because um, it is half term. Um, so we're going to hopefully let people have a break. Um, then the week after that, we've got our biodiversity and then global citizenship and then healthy living, marine. And then our last one that we're going to run in July is kind of how to submit for your green flag application. Um, but at any point, if you've got any questions or anything that um, kind of crops up after this by all means either drop us an email um, through eco-schools at leicester.gov.uk um, or if anyone else has got any questions um, go through one of our social media channels um, and I'm sure we can help you from there uh, yeah um, you know the renewing the green flags yes the ours is due to expire mm -hmm. what happens in terms of the fact that we've been on lockdown and not here Will it just expire or will the date get jogged on or what? Yeah, happens? so the kind of the advice I've had at the moment, and that's, I suppose, for the other Sarah as well, actually, because yours, I think, is going to expire shortly, um, is that they will continue as they are until at least the new term. Um, so I'm going to get some more guidance. Oh, and Mayflower as well, yeah. Um, so at the moment, there's no urgency in terms of renewing them. Um, you will keep that green flag status um, until at least the new term, and they'll send some information out. Okay. Um, in terms of time scales, but generally it's if you can resubmit, do, um, and they are able to reaccredit schools at the moment. But the flip side of that is if you if you don't feel like you are ready, um, or kind of obviously you've missed a term with the eco team, that that's something you can renew in the next term as well. Um, obviously the fact that sort of my role has changed slightly, and a lot of the stuff we were doing has kind of slipped because I'm not on it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, um, yeah, that'll all be taken into account. So, yeah, but by all means, either get in touch with those. Um, and I'm going to get some more guidance from Eco Schools nationally just in terms of kind of where we are with kind of what those deadlines are. Because the original was um, for September, but I'm sure that'll probably be extended again. Um, but yeah, so don't worry at the moment. If you can do it, by all means, we're help, more than happy to help you with the renewals. But if not, um, they will be extended. Um, for the time being anyway. A few. All right, no problem. Excellent. Have I missed anything, Amy? Uh, I don't think so, no. Um, well, thank you very much, everyone. We'll make sure this gets recorded and uploaded up onto our YouTube video channel this afternoon. Um, and we'll see you all after half term, hopefully. Yeah. Thank you very much for all our speakers today. You've been really helpful. Miss change from just us speaking. Um, and yeah, brilliant. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, Bye now. Bye.